I'm going to show you how to create a data warehouse using the Cloudera Data Platform, or CDP. The scenario we'll look at is that we're a manufacturer of airplanes, and we want to make sure that our manufacturing processes are good, the planes are dependable, are landing on time, leaving on time, and, and safe. So that's the business driver here. So let's jump over to the warehousing side of things. Within the Cloudera Data Warehousing Service, or CDW, we have the concept of catalogs and then virtual warehouses. These are the compute environments where the warehousing workloads run. One virtual warehouse can query against the data in one catalog, but multiple virtual warehouses can query against the data in one catalog. So it's a many to one relationship here. And we do that so that we can dedicate compute environments to specific tenants that might need a certain SLA to be met or their workload characteristics look a lot different than the other tenants. And so we can size and tune the virtual warehouses appropriately for each tenant. And that includes things like auto scaling rules, auto suspend and auto startup rules, how much memory is used for cash and, and things like that. So the process of setting up a new warehouse is actually the process of onboarding a new line of business, right? So in our case, like I mentioned, we're a, an airplane manufacturing company. We've got a lot of historical data on airplanes, airlines, flights that have been taken. And we want to add new data into that. Maybe we're doing a new analysis to try to figure out why so many planes are late all the time. So what we'll do is come into this huge um, SQL editor here and we'll simulate what a data engineering or ETL engineer would typically do to add data into the warehouse. I'm going to copy this URL here. This is going to take us um, to another view of, of the Hue tool that lets us browse the object store, in this case, the S3 bucket that's used for our CDP environment. And in cloud environments, it's very common that new data to be added into the into a warehouse gets dumped into an object store, some location, and a landing zone. So in our case, we've got this landing zone here. This directory flights 1M for 1 million. It's a million new flight records as a CSV file. And we're using the Hive engine here. And that lets us create an external table definition on top of a new file because it's CSV, it's pretty straightforward to do. So this is just a metadata operation. We'll make sure that it works. And so all of a sudden we can now query that new data, play around it, see what's there if we want, or just go ahead and ingest it into the rest of the curated warehouse. So this flights work table, this is actually the curated version of the flights data. This is in a the work file format, which is a columnar file format. And it's a full asset managed table. It lets us do a lot of sophisticated performance techniques that I'll touch on later. So you can see here, there's about 92 million records in the table now. And what we're doing with this next query is we're taking that source data that we just defined the table definition on, and we're going to insert it into this curated table. On the way in, we're going to drop a column. We could do other data uh, manipulation tasks, maybe drop other fields, create some drive fields, maybe join this data with another table and then an update the subsequent curated table that's done a lot of times for slow changing dimension updates and things like that. Hive is an asset database, so it's pretty easy to do those sorts of updates. So now we'll create data and hopefully there's now yeah. 93 million. And so let's switch over and start to run some analytics queries to make sure that, that the end users can actually utilize the, the data in a performant manner. So this is just a sort of a simple query that tries to figure out which airlines are, are causing the most delays or have the most number of flights with the highest percentage of delays. Pretty straightforward. But the point is that now the data, because it's in this curated format, the analytics and reporting and dashboarding goes pretty quickly, um, very tight and seamless. One other thing I mentioned earlier is once we had the data in a curated format, these work tables, it lets us do some optimizations for performance. So that query I ran earlier, you can see it selects some fields, does some aggregations and um, some groupings. Specifically, it hits two tables, flights work and airlines work. When I look at the explain plan, here, flights work and airlines work. So we don't need to get into the specifics of that, but what we're able to do with Cloud Air Data Warehouse is create a materialized view. I'm not going to do it because it takes a few minutes to populate with the entire historical data. But what it does is it creates a materialized view that pre-joins those two tables together because they're a common, it's a common pattern for our users to join those together. And subsequent queries that join those two tables together will actually not scan those two tables, but will instead hit the materialized view table, which is sort of pre-aggregated and pre-computed the, the data that is already being, that's, that's being requested in the select clause here. So it's a way, it's, it's very common in, in dashboarding types of use cases where you have users all running the same types of queries over and over and over, we can detect that, materialize those views, 
so that those users' queries run a lot faster. And because they're faster, we can get a lot higher concurrency because they require fewer resources to actually execute the query. 